Any questions, preguntas, data, or anything else? I just wanted to say that I think it's going well. They're talking to David the last couple of times, last week and this week. Great. It's going pretty good. Great. Okay. Good. David has a cold this week, so. Yeah. Um, I about that. He didn't, sound, he didn't sound very good this morning. Yeah. So <laughs> he had to go get some, some medication. Um, we all hope he feels a lot better. I hope it's not, uh, he already had COVID, right? You said he had the shot. He yeah. said he'd been vaccinated. Yeah, but he's, he had, had he's had COVID and had the yeah. shot. And yes. Anna, can you smell yet? Uh, <laughs> no, not really. Just a uh, few things. Anna but got, not always. Anna got COVID a year, how, a year ago, more than a year ago, mm -hmm. right? And oh, could, yeah. not, could not smell, cannot smell stuff. Just to, oh, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you but, taste, but she can taste yes, it, right? Yes, I can taste. It's just a small. I don't smell anything. I started sm smelling like a couple of months ago, but just a few things like uh, my shampoo or um, things that I smell always, you know, uh, often, very often. Uh, but it's rare, so mm. that's fine. <laughs> like poop. No. <laughs> no yet. That's good. Uh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a good side to that. Okay. <clears throat> well, guys, um, don't know where the Spanish speakers are, but uh, Anna is still going to do uh, part of this presentation in Spanish because people do watch the recordings. Okay. So, no questions at all. Thank you. Mark. Okay. All right. I do have a, I do have a question. I just had to unmute, but uh, mm -hmm. I I think you told me how do I get the information on if I wanted to help somebody else because I have some friends at a church that might want to might want to get some help, mm -hmm. and I think there's an instruction sheet and you told me, but I forgot exactly how that works. Okay. Um, as far as like getting uh, connecting with us. Like like being no, part of the program. No, connecting connecting with a Spanish speaker where I can learn Spanish and they can learn English. Okay, well, so in module four, module four, there is a resource resource called um, Practice with Me. Okay. Okay, and basically it's a two sided letter. One side's in English, the other side's in Spanish. Right, right. Very okay. simple letter, and fundamentally it says, "Hey." I'm trying to improve my Spanish and mm -hmm. I would love to help you improve your English if you want. Okay. And okay. Uh, you can just hand the letter to like 10 people. Nine of those people are going to smile and say, yay, right? You're like a gift from God. Um, now, a couple of things is Try and hand the letter to people you have seen a couple of times who have seen right. you a couple of times because right. if you just walk up to a stranger on the street and you hand them a letter, right. they think it's too good to be true. How much money do you want? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but, but if you see somebody on the street like that, just wave to them for a week or two, just make mm -hmm. eye contact. Hola, como estas? Right. And then after seeing them three or four times then you give them the letter and they understand that mm -hmm. okay. okay he's he's really trying okay okay very good advice great 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 okay practice with me and do invite them to the program if you can right okay um okay. and uh if money's a problem don't let it be a problem have them talk to us okay okay James, how are you doing today? Yo ando bien, y tú? Muy bien, gracias a Dios. Sí. Okay. We are going to, so Anna prepared another amazing uh, slide deck here. And so I am going to um, start this slideshow. 
So we want to talk about <clears throat> 2022 um, and goals and how goals can change and how much time you should be devoting to different parts of your language learning. And that's basically the topic for tonight, okay? okay. We're gonna try not to take too long on this, on these slides, uh, but we do think it's important, okay? So uh, <clears throat> let's jump in. Okay, so everybody has short-term goals and long-term goals, right? So um, your long-term goal, of course, is, you know, to be like a great Spanish speaker and be able to talk about it, read, uh, read books and uh, yeah, um, fluent, uh, fluency is not, not a number of words. Fluency is the ability to say things without translating in your head first. And so, um, <clears throat> right. So you're already fluent in a few words. You know, if people say baño and cerveza and things like that, you don't have to translate first. Your goal right. is to become more fluent, right, okay. each day. The long-term goals and short-term goals, what we want to talk about here are things like, suppose that you start out and um, you want to be, say, you're a nurse, and your short-term goal might be just to speak enough Spanish to connect with your patients, right? right. Okay, whereas the long-term goals are that, you know, become fluent. But your short-term goals, each time you reach, what, what you should do is kind of break that down into little sizable chunks. And each time you reach that goal, then you set a new short-term goal. Okay. If your goal is for travel or relationship or something like that, then that goal keeps changing. Um, <clears throat> Some suggestions, for example, once you set that goal, try and share that goal. And as Anna says here, share it with someone who cares if you achieve that goal. Now, that may sound strange, but it makes a difference. If somebody's saying, you know, how are you doing? How are you going? Right. It kind of pushes you forward. So then once you identify that short term goal, that's when you can start listing the specific uh, uh, words and phrases and vocabulary that are going to help you reach that goal. This is why the first module in the program is identifying your why. Why do I want to speak Spanish in the first place, right? And then as you do that, uh, reevaluate. Do not be afraid. If your goals change, um, <clears throat> Suppose you're a nurse and you're trying to learn Spanish to connect with your patients, but then you uh, book a trip down to Mexico in February, your short-term goal might be, oh, right now I want to learn enough Spanish to travel, right? It might change temporarily to a different goal, and that's okay. Anna, do you agree? Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah, yes, I do agree. Okay, I'm trying not to talk too much, believe it or not. Objetivos a corto y a largo plazo. Es un tema bien importante. Consideramos que es importante porque a medida que vamos avanzando a este nuevo año, tenemos que reevaluar. Es un buen tiempo para para proponernos nuevas metas. Entonces tenemos que reevaluar qué hemos estado haciendo y qué necesitamos hacer para mejorar, para eh, obtener eh, más fluidez al hablar. Y como ya me decía, fluidez no se trata de hablar rápido o de corrido, sino se trata de eh, no eh, traducir cada vez que hablemos. Y no se trata de traducir grandes párrafos o conversaciones sin, o tener largas conversaciones, sino ser capaces de recordar las palabras que vamos eh, aprendiendo y ponerlas en práctica. Entonces, a medida que vamos avanzando, es importante que nosotros eh, veamos eh, qué estamos aprendiendo, qué necesitamos aprender, cómo podemos mejorar, ¿verdad? Entonces, aquí eh, es importante que nos propongamos eh, objetivos que sean tangibles, que podamos realizar en un periodo corto de una semana o quizás de dos o tres meses. Un ejemplo aquí sería eh, con los niveles. 
más o menos nosotros identificamos fácilmente el nivel en el que nos encontramos y eso quiere decir que si soy principiante, mi objetivo debería ser eh, obtener una base sólida sobre el nivel principiante y eh, lo que significa que debo aprender vocabulario, debo aprender qué sé yo, cómo se estructuran las oraciones y eh, puedo decir que el nivel principiante lo voy a alcanzar o terminar en un periodo de dos o tres meses, ¿verdad? Como siempre les decimos, eso depende eh, básicamente de nuestro tiempo, de nuestra disponibilidad, ¿verdad? Hay personas que tienen mucho tiempo disponible, entonces lo pueden hacer un periodo corto de tres o cuatro semanas, pero para otras personas que trabajan todo el día o que pues tienen una agenda bien apretada, se va a ser necesario extender ese tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, pero lo importante aquí es establecer las metas. Eh, relacionado a lo mismo es la idea de enumerar o enlistar qué vocabulario necesitamos o qué, um, qué temas necesitamos aprender. Por ejemplo, como James decía, si yo soy enfermera um, y voy a tratar con pacientes, mi, mi primer objetivo debería al menos ser capaz de saludar, de presentarme, de preguntarle sus nombres. Pero una vez alcanzado ese objetivo, ok, lo reevalúo, ¿qué necesito ahora? Ahora necesito hacerle preguntas a esa persona, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué tengo que hacer? Lo que tengo que hacer es aprender preguntas. Sencillas, pueden ser preguntas de sí y no, pero estoy avanzando a un siguiente nivel, ¿verdad? Y así sucesivamente. Y luego compartir las metas con una persona es bien importante. Cuando tenemos una persona que con nosotros, con la que podemos eh, hablar sobre lo que es importante, eh, no nos encontramos solo, ¿verdad? Y, y eso es esta comunidad, ¿verdad? Si ustedes se encuentran a una persona en esta comunidad con la que pueden compartir sus metas, cómo van haciéndolo, pues es bonito. Pero si no, si ustedes tienen eh, amigos o familiares con los que puedan compartir y que de algún modo los puedan alentar a seguir adelante, entonces háganlo porque va a ser una ayuda necesaria y sobre todo importante. So, <clears throat> this is really good for everybody. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to dive into, well, no, let me, let me back up one, okay. Here, has anybody changed directions since you began, since you began Share Lingo and you said, you read that first chapter on your unique why. Has anybody started with that and then changed to something else? Yeah, Peter. Um, since I first started, I um, have decided to uh, branch off a little in my business and start a handyman service. And so I really have the goal now of being able to offer uh, my services to Spanish speaking people in my area. So I'd really like to okay. speed up my learning and, and be able to converse with people in their homes about what they need. Okay. So the same advice that um, Anna just gave to the Spanish speakers applies to you, right? So the first thing is just to establish, you know, I'm a nice guy and I... I like you and um, I'm trying to learn Spanish, right? Okay, just that just establishes the trust and connection. And then your second is some vocabulary about what you can do. And then your third thing is the ability to ask yes or no questions, right? Because, and the idea, what Anna was saying was that Uh, like with a nurse, you want to ask yes or no questions rather than open-ended questions Because on an open-ended question, you might get these paragraphs or this, you know, you know, five mm -hmm. minutes back and, you, and mm -hmm. we don't know what they're saying, right? But if you ask a yes or no question and they say, sí o no, you're great, right? So just write down those kind of things that you want to do first. And there you go. Anybody else uh, change direction a little bit? A little bit. Uh-huh. Doug? Uh, I'm thinking, I, I think you kind of need to live in another country for a little while. If that's an option, do it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's always sort of intriguing. Uh, uh -huh. Or do you uh, have a particular country in mind? Nicaragua is really beautiful. So, somewhere in the speech, I was thinking of Colombia, but Nicaragua would be 
Uh-huh. Nicaragua is closer. Yeah. Uh huh. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Mexico is always there. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I, uh, I know somebody slightly more from work that who uh, I don't spend some time in Nicaragua. I don't know if she speaks Spanish or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a social worker that I worked with when my wife was uh, going to the nursing home at the time. Mm-hmm. I see if I can touch base with her on that. Yeah, ask her. Yeah. Ask her. Yeah. Giovanni, bienvenido. ¿Cómo estás hoy? Good morning, James. Good. How are you today? How are I'm you very today? well. I'm very well. Uh, pero yes. no es la mañana. Say good, good night. Say good, good night, afternoon. Good, af- good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> or good evening. Mm-hmm. Muy bien. Es, estoy feliz que estás aquí. Okay. Bueno. Anybody else? Change direction? Okay. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how much time should we spend on different parts of learning? And we'll go through this fairly fast. I won't talk too much about this, all right? But for beginner, basic, intermediate, advanced, we spend a different amount of time on these four areas and they are Vocabulary, grammar, listening, and speaking. Okay. Now, I just want to say really quick um, the vast majority of people who start to learn another language like Spanish don't do any speaking practice. They don't have any conversations. Now, obviously, you're in ShareLingo, you have an opportunity to have conversations. All right. Now, the what we're, what we're showing here on this graphic, in this, in this level, it's really important that you do things. You listen to music, you watch movies in Spanish, maybe, maybe with English subtitles. You repeat the words that you're learning. Even if you're watching TV, repeat those words out loud, okay? Don't worry about what anybody else is, is saying, all right? Um, even if you do not understand all of the words, still listen and try and repeat. And that's because those words are going to come back around in the future and you'll, you'll have a good idea of how they're pronounced. All right. Now, look at this graphic. Um, if you can see, uh, yes. Okay. So blue is vocabulary and uh, kind of orange is grammar. So if you're a real beginner, let's say that, that you've, you've got X number of hours a week. All right. Try and spend roughly 40% of your time working on vocabulary, just learning more vocabulary, and 40% of your time kind of uh, getting to know the grammar, okay? Roughly equal. And so the grammar is like, you know, the sentence structure and uh, working on the different present tenses, like um, estoy, estás, está, estamos, Okay, those things. All right. Okay. But don't forget those other two little slivers over there, which is 10% listening and 10% speaking. All right. Now, listening is the part where you're listening to TV, listening to radio, listening to something else. Speaking is where you're having conversations, like ShareLingo conversations. And of course, part of that conversation involves listening. So you might be doing more than 10% total listening, but roughly, if you're a beginner, these are kind of the percentages to allocate to your time. Okay, nivel principiante. Esto es lo que les recomendamos hacer, este gráfico. Eh, es una recomendación eh, que funciona muy bien de lo que ustedes deberían estar haciendo. Eh, por ejemplo, para el nivel principiante, eh, casi todo sucede en el tiempo presente, por lo que deberíamos, eh, y sobre todo es donde obtenemos la base, una base sólida para poder avanzar a los siguientes niveles y para poder comunicarnos. Entonces tenemos que enfocar nuestro tiempo de estudio uh, de esta manera, un 40% para aprender 
eh, lo que es vocabulario y gramática. Eh, a, con gramática me refiero a que van a aprender cómo se estructuran las oraciones en tiempo presente. Y vamos a dedicar un 10% a hablar y a escuchar. El habla la vamos a obtener escuchando música, viendo películas o alguna serie con subtítulos en inglés. Perdón, algo en inglés con subtítulos en español. ¿Verdad? Y el habla sería que cada vez que podamos, que, que estemos aprendiendo al que estamos aprendiendo una, una palabra, podamos eh, repetirla en voz alta o podamos usarla cada vez que podamos. Esa es la idea de lo que hay que hacer en el nivel principiante. Have you ever seen anything like this? Have you have you thought about like, okay, if I have four hours this whole week, I, I can put together four hours of I'm going to work on my Spanish, right? Think about uh, maybe kind of scheduling out. How much time am I just, I'm going to do flashcards or I'm going to do Duolingo or I'm going to look at the, at the um, ShareLingo vocabulary or, or something just to memorize vocabulary, right? Uh, how much am I going to look at uh, grammar or structure? How much am I going to listen to the radio? Uh, listen to the news, listen to songs, all right? Think about taking whatever time you have available and do that. Has anybody done that? There is an exercise uh, in module two, uh, kind of a worksheet, two or three, um, a worksheet to help map out uh, how many minutes you're going to work on different things every day. Kurt, I know that you're like an engineering guy and I would not be surprised if you had mapped that out. Yeah. However, it turned out to be unrealistic. Okay. What happened? Just, I had, I thought I had more time than I actually do. So I reduced it by the percentages rather than, you know, um, spend more time on one thing than another. Just reduce the percentages. I mean, not reduce the percentages, but the total hours and the total hours. Portion. Yeah. Right. Okay. But yeah, that was, That was interesting. Okay. All right. So you have run into that. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to basic. All right. Um, so at the at the basic level, it changes a little bit. Changes just a little bit. Right. So what is the basic level? Basic is is where you're in the present tense and you're trying to do the question and answers. Simple. Hello, my name is James. What is your name? How are you today? All those things. So the amount of time that you're spending on vocabulary and grammar reduces a little bit because you're getting to the point where you can do that. And you're at a point where you can spend a bit more time on the listening and the speaking, the conversation part. All right. So it includes The vocabulary and grammar reduces a little bit at basic and the speaking and listening increases a little bit at basic. So, all right. So with these little short conversations, right? You have to make a, a big effort to increase the time that you're listening and speaking. That's, that's the fundamental thing, but it's not yet half your time that's listening and speaking. You're still spending a bit more time on vocabulary and grammar. Nivel básico. Este nivel es, uh, yo sí, creo que es el bien. más importante de todos porque es en el, en el que la mayoría de, de las personas llegamos a estar, ¿verdad? Y es donde nos mantenemos por más tiempo. Y la razón por la que nos mantenemos más tiempo es porque enfocamos mal nuestro tiempo, ¿verdad? Nuevamente aquí les mostramos qué hacer. Eh, si ven... Eh, lo crítico de, este, de, de esta parte es que tenemos que incrementar lo que es el habla y el escucha. Porque cuando llegamos a este nivel, siempre estamos diciendo que logramos entender la idea principal, pero no todas las palabras, o entendemos parte de lo que nos están diciendo. Y la razón es porque no estamos invirtiendo suficiente tiempo en hablar y escuchar. Entonces aquí vamos a aumentar eh, las conversaciones. Van a ser cortas pero nos van a ayudar mucho. Y si ven, eh, lo que es la parte de escucha eh, cambia, aumenta drásticamente en comparación a lo que fue el principiante, pero eso es porque necesitamos eh, desarrollar nuestra escucha, sobre todo la comprensión, necesitamos entender los sonidos de las palabras. Y 
siempre vamos a seguir estudiando pues, vocabulario, gramática, pero si ven cómo se reduce el porcentaje es porque tenemos que enfocarnos en seguir hablando, seguir hablando, seguir hablando para llegar al nivel intermedio. So then, after another month or two, you're going to get to the intermediate level. And the intermediate level is where, okay, even though, you know, maybe I'm not ready to have a 30-minute conversation yet, I am starting to think about wanting to be able to say the past tense, the future tense, something other than present tense. That's what we define as the intermediate level. And you might spend six months or a year or two years in the intermediate level. That's fine. Okay. But that's where you're getting comfortable with what did you do last weekend? Oh, I went to the uh, supermarket or, you know, when did you go to Nicaragua or Costa Rica or, you know, or um, I'm going to go to the supermarket, you know, those types of things. So that intermediate level is where you're going to spend the most time in this journey that you're on to, spe to speak Spanish. And, um, and, and all of these are just guidelines, these percentages, right? Um, this is just what, what we find with, you know, thousands of people. Roughly 25% for each of these four things. So if you were breaking out, I have four hours for this week. I'm going to spend one hour on vocabulary, one hour on listening, one hour on speaking, and one hour on conversations. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to spend, you know, Monday on vocabulary, Tuesday on grammar. It, you're going to do a little bit each day, but the total number of minutes is going to work out to something around equal for these four things. And that's kind of the difference between the early uh, beginner and basic levels where we're We're spending more time studying, whereas at the intermediate level, okay, uh, get in there and spend an equal number, of, an equal amount of time actually uh, listening and then conversations. Llegado a este punto, eh, van, a, van a ver que pasar de básico a intermedio nos va a costar un poquito, pero eh, en realidad mantenernos, nos vamos a mantener mucho más tiempo en el intermedio porque es, es, es lo que más requiere tiempo y dedicación y estudio, porque es lo que nos lleva a avanzar a un nivel lanzado, que es donde nuestro inglés se vuelve casi perfecto, nunca perfecto, pero muy bueno, ¿verdad? Entonces, no les había comentado lo que estaba diciendo James sobre el tiempo. Si tenemos cuatro horas disponibles, a la semana, vamos a tratar de dividir en la medida de lo posible, en partes iguales, ese tiempo disponible para dedicarle el 25% a cada parte, vocabulario, gramática y escucha. Es importante aquí para los de nivel intermedio porque cuando estén en una práctica con un compañero, si tienen una hora, ¿verdad? Van a querer practicar 15 minutos cada, cada cosa, ¿verdad? Obviamente el vocabulario lo van a tener que aprender anteriormente, lo van a tener que ustedes. Entonces van a tener tiempo extra durante esa práctica para enfocarse en lo que sería el habla y eh, el, la escucha, ¿verdad? Pero eh, pues nuestra sugerencia sería que en la medida de lo posible sean tiempos iguales para cada año. Yes. Ok. So, we're going to talk about advanced in just a second. But for everybody, beginner, basic, intermediate. Are you finding that uh, these levels kind of make sense? You know, we don't, we don't use the, the 16 point European common language thing, right? We just do four levels because we're breaking down what you have to focus on at the beginning to get to the basic level. And then what do you have to do in the basic level to get to the intermediate level? And we want to get you to the intermediate level as quickly as you can, and then you can spend as long as you want in intermediate. Any questions so far before we just touch really briefly on advanced? Well, my patient today told me to try and listen to the radio on my way to work. Because yes. they do give some um, English with the Spanish at the same time for you to kind of get used to 
hearing a different language, the two of them yeah. combined. So that's what I plan to do tomorrow morning on my Great. drive into work. <laughs> okay, so try and listen to uh, talk radio if you can, all right? Spanish talk radio. Mm -hmm. they, you might be able to find CNN in Espanol, all right? If not, you mm -hmm. uh, usually there's a talk radio station in the mornings, right? Just like the okay. English does talk radio more than the Spanish music, right? If you are doing Spanish music, try and listen no to- music. No music. Okay, all right. No music. <laughs> okay. Spanish talk radio. And it does, okay. not, it does not matter if you understand everything. It doesn't matter if you understand everything, okay? Because what you're doing is you're, you're tuning your ear to the rhythm of the language and you will find very quickly, there was, there was a post uh, from Karen uh, this week about it just clicked for her. She was listening uh, to, to, you know, movies, Spanish movies and Spanish radio. And just like overnight, one time it just clicked and she could follow along the whole story <clears throat> and understand what they were talking about. Okay. And, and that's what's going to happen for you. All right. Okay. I, I, well, I do understand I, my patients when I ask them a question. I just can't put it back into a sentence. That's okay. And that's my thing you now. So the other advice is don't worry about sentences. All you're worried about at this point is communication. Okay. It's like yesterday I go to the beach. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect grammar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. What were you going to say, Gary? Yeah, I was just going to say that there's a guy on the internet that has a way of doing it. Now he says, he says you should listen to Spanish just a little ahead of your, a little ahead of what you understand, not too further ahead. Mm -hmm. That's his. That's his opinion, and I was going to ask you what your opinion would be. Well, so it depends on whether you're trying to build vocabulary by listening, or whether you're trying. You're at the very early stages, like a beginner, and you're mm -hmm. just trying to separate the words. You know how sometimes. Uh, yeah. Uh, perhaps when Anna's talking, mm -hmm. even when she's talking to the Spanish speakers, if you're a beginner, it might be difficult to distinguish the individual words. True. Very true. So at that level, <clears throat> I'm saying it doesn't matter if you understand because you're you're catching the rhythm so that you can distinguish the individual words in a sentence. Oh. If you don't know what mm -hmm. they mean. Right. Okay. And then the next step is more to what you've alluded to, which is, okay, now I can, I can pick out individual words and I want to be able to follow along the story. So right. Then, right. Then in that situation, you might not listen to the morning news. You might listen to podcasts or, or YouTube resources that are at your level or just yeah. above. all right right so they're kind of two different things um the more the more you can listen to normal speed spanish mm -hmm. right even if you don't understand it the the payoff is large i found out one other thing too is sometimes they combine words and it sounds like a whole different word it's two words just like they we combine do. them yeah, just like we just, do. Just like and we it's do. Hard sometimes I had that experience just yesterday at my church, and they combined two words, and I thought, oh, that's this and this. I see now. Uh, do you recall what that was, that example? No, unfortunately, I can't okay. recall what it was. It's all right. Kurt? Yeah, Kurt? I can think of one. Uh, real easy one is mi hijo. Mm -hmm. You don't say my son. You say mi hijo. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that is a great example. And so, I, I found, too, that a word that ends with a vowel and the next word starts with a vowel that pretty much runs together. Absolutely. Runs together, yeah. Yes. Okay. And so great example is so when you, when you're listening to that and you start to understand that mijo is actually two words, right? That's a, that's a breakthrough. Um, advanced ready. <clears throat> okay. So at the advanced level, let's define it first, okay? The advanced level in our definition is 
you're pretty comfortable having a conversation about almost anything. Uh, you can talk for 20, 30 minutes, two hours, right? But you're kind of doubting yourself because you're, you're, you're really trying to master those tenses, right? And more importantly, you're starting to want to express your feelings, right? So the advanced level is when, oh, if I see a movie, can I talk to somebody in Spanish about that movie and, and what I liked about it and how it made me feel, right? You're not so worried about vocabulary and grammar. Of course, you're trying to increase your vocabulary. Of course, you're trying to improve your grammar. But this is really a lot of listening and a lot of trying to talk to people. Okay, so you'll see that it's skewed time wise. If I if I have a limited amount of time during the week, it's skewed kind of the opposite of the beginner. Right. You know, once you hit the advanced level, then you're learning for the rest of your life. Okay, uh, nivel avanzado es cuando, en teoría, deberíamos ser capaces de poder um, expresar nuestros sentimientos sobre algo que nos gusta o que no nos gusta, obviamente, ¿verdad? No hay restricciones sobre qué deberíamos simplemente expresar, eh, qué sé yo, puede ser cariño, puede ser amor, puede ser disgusto, cualquier sentimiento, cualquier emoción, es donde nosotros vamos a ser capaces de, de hablarlo, ¿verdad? Tanto en lo escrito como en, en la parte verbal. Aquí le sugerimos 33% de habla, o sea que cuando ustedes estén en, entre un nivel intermedio y avanzado, cuando estén con sus compañeros se van a enfocar más en, en tener conversaciones más que en hacer, eh, qué sé yo, prácticas, o tal vez no con los compañeros, pero van a encontrar personas con las que puedan platicar, tener más conversaciones largas. Y eh, un 17% siempre en lo que es la escucha, pero de nuevo les, les, les reitero el hecho de que la escucha no se, obviamente cuando ustedes estén teniendo alguna conversación van a ser capaces eh, de, de escuchar, ¿verdad? De, de tener ese ejercicio. Es una escucha extra. Y les recomendábamos que sea películas, series, cualquier cosa que a ustedes les guste, porque aquí lo importante sobre aprender un idioma es que no tiene que ser aburrido y no tiene que ser estresante. Si para ustedes es estresante, qué sé yo, escuchar un podcast o las o una noticia, no lo hagan, busquen algo que les guste y que sea agradable, es el mismo ejercicio, pero la forma en que ustedes lo aprenden es agradable y cuando hacemos algo por gusto, entonces es más fácil aprender, ¿verdad? Y siempre eh, seguimos pues obteniendo más vocabulario, más gramática y la gramática aquí en este nivel avanzado es súper importante porque queremos ser capaces de tener un buen inglés, de poder comunicarnos eh, el, la perfecto como sea posible en lo escrito sobre todo ¿verdad? ok, as you advance through these stages and each one of these stages it's really important that you're comfortable right, that you're not stressed that you know you're not beating yourself up at each, at all of these stages but especially you know in, in the advanced stage that the whole idea is to have comfortable Uh, conversations and practice at whatever level you're at, because that's when you learn. You Your mind doesn't absorb as well when you're stressed as when you're comfortable. All right. Thank you, Anna. And I think you put in here some homework. Yeah. This is kind of, kind of guidelines, right? Yeah. So, Set some goals for yourself. Like, I really want to get from beginner to basic by this time. I really want to get from basic to intermediate by this time. Um, inter once, you're, once you're in the intermediate, I think your goals are more like, I, I really want to be comfortable with this topic or this tense or this something, right? And, and break those down as if... Uh, any other project that you are doing, break it down into achievable pieces and celebrate each one of your successes. Uh, so, you know, wow, I, I did that. I got that. I, you know, uh, like Karen did this week for everybody saying, you know, I like, wow, I, I did this. 
now and share that, share those successes with the group because it's good for you and it's good for the group, right? How many people saw Karen's post this week? Did everybody see the WhatsApp post? Yeah. Wasn't it great? It's great. It's like, yeah, they're doing it. Okay. Um, small achievable goals, but but be prepared to reevaluate your short-term goals. So it's okay if they change, but set them down, write them down, put them in your journal, um, and keep after them. Bueno, la tarea es muy simple y es relacionado a todo lo que les hemos dicho antes, y es um, establecer eh, objetivos para poder avanzar a través de los diferentes niveles, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, si solo tenemos, tu, perdón, podemos establecer dos o tres meses para permanecer en un determinado nivel y próximamente avanzar al siguiente. Obviamente no queremos avanzar si no hemos aprendido bien. Tenemos que aprender bien para poder avanzar al siguiente nivel, ¿verdad? Y luego eh, incluir en nuestro aprendizaje o en nuestros tiempos de estudio el eh, acciones, como les comentábamos, escuchar música, ver series, películas, leer, audiobook, cualquier cosa que les guste. Y cada vez que sea posible, cada semana, cada mes, eh, revisar nuestros objetivos de estudio eh, y sobre todo reevaluar si continuamos con los mismos objetivos o si necesitamos eh, cambiarlos un poco. Uh -huh. Ok. Uh, do try and chat, uh, like text chat in your target language, don't worry about mistakes. When you're, in, when you're in WhatsApp, when you're in our group, don't worry about mistakes, okay? Don't worry if your grammar is perfect. Don't worry about if your tenses are perfect. Just try and communicate. And then help each other, you know? Help correct each other. I think I'm good saying that everybody here appreciates those corrections. Yes? Okay, if we write something in the WhatsApp group and it's not correct, and then somebody tells us the correct way to say it, we don't take it personally. It's like, thank you. Right? So don't be afraid to help other people. Right? So what do you think? Talk to me. Tell me, what, what does this make you think of? What questions or comments or observations do you have about these kind of percentages? And they're just guidelines. Um, I'll say it, I think they're very helpful. Um, I never really thought about percentages. I, I do have goals. I do vocabulary and verbs first thing in the morning before mm -hmm. I go to work every day. So I set goals like that, but I never really set it to time how much, you know, what percentage of my time is spent on that. But I do try to hit everything, vocabulary, grammar, and speaking and listening. Excellent. Okay. And one week might be different than another week, depending on opportunity. Right? Definitely. Yeah. So um, these are just guides, just what we. Yes. Anybody else? Talking about Duolingo, that's probably vocabulary and grammar. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of yeah. right between the two. Mm -hmm. How many people have taken Duolingo? and written down words and then used those words in your share lingo practice. Has anybody done that? <clears throat> it's okay if you do. Good idea. You no, know, it's okay if you do. If you're using Duolingo or Rosetta Stone or uh, Pimsleur or um, any of the thousand things <coughs> or even if you're using, you know, the ShareLingo books, right? If, if you're looking at one of the ShareLingo books and uh, the sentence doesn't make sense or the, um, you know, it, it raises a question, be sure to run that past your practice partner because that really helps um, solidify it for you. Okay. Um, one thing I appreciate you talking about is um, for me, last week, I guess, because I started the job for the first week, I literally felt so overwhelmed that I could not concentrate. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I didn't want to study or to memorize, but it would seem like there was so much things going on in my mind at the same time that I could not focus on the basics. Even though I know I start doing my ABC, I know the vowels, but I couldn't in my mind get to that place where 
I am ready to go hit the books for it. <coughs> That's fine. Okay. So there's going to be weeks where the only thing you can do is listen to the radio. Right. Yeah. And that's that's all you do that week. That's that occupies a hundred percent of this pie. Yeah. That's just. But I appreciate you saying that because I was really feeling beating myself last week. I said I went on. I said I text in Spanish to my neighbor, so she answered me <laughs> back in Spanish. So that I've been practicing, but to sit down, I just could not concentrate. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, well, thank you for telling us. I mean, that's that's reality. Everybody has their own race, right? Yeah, and don't beat yourself up. Yep. But this is another reason why um, it helps to tell somebody what your goals are, because um, they can, yeah. you know, what the last thing you want is this to become, you know, like like that that treadmill that you get at Christmas or, uh, you know, New Year's resolution <laughs> is I'm, I'm going to buy a treadmill and I'm going to get on that every day. Right. And then you do that for 20 days yeah. running, but then on the time, eventually the treadmill becomes someplace where you hang your clothes. Yep. That's true. <clears throat> okay. And you don't go back to it. Don't let Spanish be that, that treadmill. Even if, you know, something interrupts what you're doing, come back to it and just mm -hmm. learn one more word. And you'll okay. find that just learning one more word is enough to get you on the path mm -hmm. again. Yeah, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. So um, next Monday, I think we're gonna probably kind of dwell on this some more the 2020 goals, 2022 goals. I'd love it if people could kind of map out what are your goals and not just what you want to do, but by when. And, and maybe share with us, uh, share with us what you want to do and by when. Um, and it's okay if they change. Right? Okay. I, I'd like to say briefly, if that's okay. Sure, sure. Um, I go to church and whatever church you guys go to and we sing songs and that's where I learn, learn a lot of the Spanish, just learning the songs. So we have the songs on the, where you can see them and you can hear them and see them both. And that really helpful. That's very helpful. Absolutely. And, yeah. In fact, I find it easier and listen to the sermon. I get lost in the sermon, but I can understand the song. Excellent. That's fantastic. So how many people are, well, and if you're not religious, that's fine, okay? But if you do right, go to right. church, how many people have the opportunity to go to a Spanish-speaking service? I do that. Yeah, great. Almost Alan, almost every week. Alan does that. I do that when I go. I'm, I'm not very good about it, but la misa en español. See, yeah. I love it. I like it so much better than, uh, the, than the Catholic. We have service at home. We have home-based service, so... Um, mm -hmm. The majority of people are Spanish speaking and my husband does speak Spanish. Awesome. So that helps. Uh -huh. And there's always Google Translate to tell you exactly what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, there is. Castilian now, Castilian. Uh-huh. <clears throat> okay. And last week, um, one of on the WhatsApp group, they sent over a song. So what I did was trying to download the song and then get the um, translation in English so I can memorize it in Spanish so I know what the word is in English. So that's what I did last week. Absolutely. Um, there is a website for popular songs, songs that are played on the radio. Um, mm -hmm. There's a website. I'll put it in chat for everybody if you want to open up the chat. Um, if you go to lyricstranslate.com, um, here, I will actually uh, bring it up for you. Um, and we have a video. Um, it's kind of old now. Um, <clears throat> just a second here. Screen number five. Okay. Um, so uh, lyrics translate. 
All right, if you're looking at uh, pretty much any popular song, Anna, what was the song that, that we did the video for a couple of years ago? Despacito. Despacito, right, of course. <clears throat> despacito, despacito. That's what I put in. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So, so this is the English version uh, that you can see here. And up here, you can see that this song has been translated into um, 105 more. So we've got Albanian, Arabic, and 105 more translations. And you're going to see that uh, it is available in, in basically everything that you want. <clears throat> so uh, maybe we can share that. There's like a how-to video where you set up a Google form. I'm going to stop sharing. So you can set up like a Google form or Google document that has two sides to it, just like in your journal. And you can copy and paste the original lyrics for Despacito in Spanish, come here, get the English lyrics and paste that in side by side and then line them up. Read that few of, through a few times as a resource. <clears throat> and at that point, just you're just listening to the Spanish, but you know what they're talking about. You know what they're saying. And um, you don't usually have that for songs that you hear in church, but you can do the same thing that Gary talked about, right? Um, get the Spanish words, use Google Translate or whatever you want to get the English words, and then catch the meaning from that. I've been reading people in Espanol. Right. I don't care about celebrities. I could care less, but you know, I start seeing patterns of words and sentences and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I know everything about JLO. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. That's good. <clears throat> um, there are uh, in many locales, there are still newspapers available. And many of them, like uh, La Voz um, and others, are available as bilingual newspapers, right? Where they have stories that are written in English and in Spanish. <laughs> My church uh, does the weekly bulletin in both English and Spanish, right? <clears throat> I like those kind of resources because they're contemporary. Uh, you read the Spanish. If you don't know what it is, you don't have to get out a dictionary or Google Translate because the translation is handy. Cool. Anna, do you want to share any of that for the Spanish speakers? No, but I would like to share three things or two things with them. Una, una cosa que sobre lo que se está hablando o lo que se está hablando es sobre como trucos o qué cosas hacer para mejorar el, qué te digo, el inglés, en nuestro caso. Um, una cosa que um, van a ver bien interesante es cómo cambiar inglés a español y de español a inglés. Y la mayoría de las personas no son tan rápidos o no lo hacen. Pasar de inglés a español o de español a inglés no es fácil y requiere mucho tiempo para que ustedes han notado que yo cambio fácilmente de inglés a español, español a inglés, no tengo ningún problema, pero es por esto y esto es lo que yo les sugiero que hagan, piensen en inglés. Actualmente yo casi todo mi tiempo, el 95% al menos de mi tiempo, yo solo pienso en inglés, yo no pienso en español. Porque cuando yo empecé a aprender inglés, para mí fue un hábito que yo me propuse. Pensar en, en inglés, ¿verdad? En el idioma que yo quise aprender. Entonces yo estaba, si yo veía una mesa, yo decía, ok, that's table. Si yo miraba la computadora, computer, 
estaba pensando, oh, si estaba haciendo una lista mental de compras, por ejemplo, oh, tengo que ir al supermercado, entonces estaba pensando qué voy a comprar. Entonces trataba de hacerlo en inglés, pensarlo en inglés o en español. Entonces iba viendo qué palabras yo no sabía, las apuntaba y las aprendía. Entonces ese ejercicio se convirtió en un hábito permanente para mí, al punto de que es bien difícil para mí pensar en español. Básicamente yo cuando ella en está hablando conmigo, cuando ella está, no, no, ella no. Sí. No puedo hablar con James en, en, en español. Um, con James Rice, I can speak in Spanish. <risa> Pero con James Archer, I cannot. La cuestión es que si hacen ese ejercicio, tal vez no van a, um, a, a hacerlo tan, qué sé yo, tan, um, tan drástico como yo tal vez lo hice o lo hago ahora, pero el punto es que ese ejercicio de pensar tanto como podamos en el, en el idioma que estamos aprendiendo, eso nos ayuda mucho. Okay? Think, try to think in Spanish as much as you can. All right. Okay. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a table, that's a glass of water, that's a dog, that's a whatever. And that's going to help you identify the things that you don't know, the missing pieces. Si estoy pensando, like I'm, oh, I'm, I am constantly asking myself, do I know how to say that in Spanish? Right? Right? And I'm checking myself. I See? do that in the kitchen when I'm cooking. <clears throat> Great. Yeah. And I try to think of, you know, like, Necesito el pan, necesito un sandwich, you know, things just mm -hmm. constantly talking to myself, which drives my wife crazy, but I'm always, you know, that's great. Vaso, vaso. Loca. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Otra cosa es que les mencionábamos anterior sobre lo importante de reevaluar nuestros objetivos. Entonces, quiero comentarles una cuestión bien importante. A veces, la razón por la que queremos aprender inglés cambia. Hay personas que lo hacen porque tienen una novia o un novio y quieren, qué sé yo, comunicarse con esa persona. Pero desgraciadamente las relaciones no duran para siempre, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Terminé con mi novio y ahora qué? Bueno, hay que, bueno, hay que buscar otro objetivo, hay que buscar... No buscar otro objetivo, pero otra motivación, ¿verdad? Algo que nos comienza. O puede ser diferente. Tal vez estamos eh, aprendiendo inglés porque tenemos una, una entrevista de trabajo, porque vamos a viajar, ok, viajamos y ahora qué. Ya no seguimos. No, ¿verdad? Entonces lo que hacemos es reevaluar esos objetivos, cambiar. La motivación sigue siendo, pues, la, la motivación cambia, el objetivo es el mismo, aprender español. Pero lo que nos motiva a nosotros a avanzar, a seguir aprendiendo, es, eso es lo que tenemos que reevaluar cada vez que alcancemos cierto nivel o la meta que nos propusimos anteriormente. Do you have the pig is called gandulas, pigeon peas? Do you have pigeon peas, the green pigeon peas? Green pigeon peas. See, that's, right. I don't know. So, See, so there's the problem, Nadia, is that I don't know what green pigeon peas are in English. <laughs> and therefore, I don't know what Gandules, gandules <laughs> verdes, gandules verdes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> uh, so I text my neighbor and she was surprised. So she says, see, sí. yeah, I'll check. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so that is a specialty word. That's a, so you will probably never forget that. Right? Gandules, yep. gandules verdes, right? Because I was cooking it. I was cooking gandules, verdes, green ones. Okay. So I love things like that. I, I really do. It's like, oh my gosh, no, I don't, I don't know what that is. Teach me. <laughs> Teach me. Yes. Yep. Um, no, uh, no, I got it. So gandules verdes for us is chicharos. Chicharos. Oh, okay. Chicharos. So that's what I didn't catch what you said. So gandules verdes is this green peas, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, it's, not so. this, it's not the American peas, it's the Caribbean peas. It's like a bean, really. Gandules is a bean, not necessarily a pea. Okay. But on, on the can in Spanish, it says gandules verde. That's what the can says, though. Okay. 
send us a picture. Put a put a picture in the WhatsApp group. That would that would help. Okay. Everybody. That would be great. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Great. Share that. Gandules verdes. Okay. All right. I see we lost Kurt. Uh, some of the others we've run over, but thank you for being here. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Always, always, thank you. always. Um, <clears throat> no More tranquila. More tranquila. <laughs> More tranquila. Take it easy. Merry Mucho Christmas. Tranquila. Merry okay. Christmas, everybody. Feliz Navidad. Um, and uh, espero que todo esté bien. Okay. Que pase un buen, buen noche, buen Navidad. Um, we'll see you on Monday, Excellent. if not before. Okay. All right. Gracias a todos. Okay. Bye -bye. Be, Ciao. be nice to people. Be nice to people. Okay. Ciao. Gracias, people. Okay.